In the 2002 book, The Elements of User Experience, Jesse James Garrett talks about user experience using this five layer diagram as a metaphor for the layers that inform one another when building a product. These being from top to bottom, strategy, scope, structure, skeleton, and surface, each layer supporting those above it. Strategy. The bottom layer is where we define the reason for the product. Who are we doing this for and why they would use it? Critical questions to ask in the strategy include, who are our users? What are our users' needs? What are our business objectives? How do we measure success? And is it IFDS? Innovative, feasible, desirable, and sustainable. Innovative being, is it a new thing? A new way of doing the same thing? or so much better that everything else that does that job is about to become redundant? Is it feasible? Do we as a team have the money, time, knowledge, resources to pull this thing off? Is it desirable? Does it matter to users? Will they want to use it? Sustainable? Is it something that will grow rather than come out and just be ignored? If you need more information about strategy, here's a couple of jumping off points. Linking out of YouTube is about the worst thing that you can do for your channel, so please hit the like button on your way out. Scope. Scope is where a lot of designers get the door slammed in their face. And it's a shame because this is where design thinking can really play a role in solving problems. Have you ever been in a project with slipping deadlines, too many unanswered questions, overblown expectations, and inevitable disappointment upon release? No, me neither. All of those symptoms can be traced back to poor scoping. What are our functional requirements? What does our product practically need to be able to do? Does it need to hail a cab? Does it need to count calories? What content, if any, will we be serving? What will it mean to the customer? Who on our team is doing what? Scoping is its own world, but there are plenty of resources out there. Here are just a few. Structure. Think story structure. This is the journey that you expect users to undertake. But remember, just because you build it that way does not mean that that is how it will be used. Always test your assumptions, especially for those key journeys, you know, the ones where they are giving you money. What pages or views will we need? What are the big clusters of our product? What do they do and how are they organized? What form will we expect our information architecture to take? How do we expect users to interact with our site and how will the product respond? To help you get a better grip on structure, may I suggest a few of these resources. Skeleton. Right below the surface is the skeleton. Where are the muscles? I don't know. Metaphors are weird. This is the layer of layout, position, order, grouping. At the skeleton layer, we optimize the arrangement of these elements for maximum effect and efficiency so that you recall the brand and any important elements like the one that lets you put in your credit card details. Important questions to ask at this layer include interface design questions such as how will we arrange elements to make it easier for users to find what they need? Navigation questions, the most important of those being how do we expect users to go from one view to another? Information design questions, chiefly how do we present our information in such a way that users will understand it? If you need help with your skeleton, you should probably see a doctor. But if you want to know more about product skeletons, here are a few places to start. Surface. This is the sensory design layer, what you see as a user. The text, photos, icons, logos, illustrations, some of it's functional, some of it is aesthetic, but it's all exposed to the user. Here are a few questions. Can I see the text on that background color? And please, please use a contrast checker. Is my text big enough? Am I going to give someone an epileptic fit with these animations? Are the buttons easily clickable in both size and placement? And if you need help with the surface layer, go here. Now, let's talk about penetration. As a designer, the question that you have to ask yourself constantly is, are you designing at the right layer? And if not, what are you planning to do to achieve deeper layer penetration? That could be learning about the underlying business needs that led to the brief, doing user tests to prove to your team that the underlying assumptions within the scope are false, or workshopping a new solution agnostic problem statement with your stakeholders. Your number one priority as a designer should be to provide the best experiences to the user. 
and a bad product can't be saved by a pretty facade. Push as far into the layer cake as possible, getting to the heart of the product, because that is where product design really is. Not in the pixel pushing and the hex codes, but in the toughest conversations that you've had with your team. Is what we're doing worth doing? What users have we tested with? Where did this idea come from? And how much time and money are we going to lose if we're wrong? Some things to remember. You're able to work on multiple layers concurrently. You don't, strictly speaking, have to complete work on layer one in order to start work on layer two. But that's not a license to just skip to layer four right out of the gate. Thanks for your time. I hope this was helpful. If you'd like to know more, there's plenty of links in the description. If you'd like me to do a video about a specific concept or a specific piece of software or a specific anything, just let me know in the comments. As you can see, I have a whole 17 subscribers now, which I'm very grateful for. So if you would like to be the 18th or 20th, please go ahead and subscribe. And thanks very much.